people who give up in the face of adversity will never succeed. You have to have the strength and the will to win and keep moving forward. mentioned time and again uh the importance of hiring the right people and the pain of hiring mm. the wrong people um how do you usually recover from setbacks this is these are huge setbacks you mentioned that it costs a lot of money a lot of heartache yeah. headaches how do you usually recover from setbacks first remove yourself from the failure don't say to yourself that i failed rather say that it was a failure or it's a mistake and I will learn from that and move forward. A lot of people, especially entrepreneurs, kasi they personalize the failure. Mm -hmm. I failed. And yun na yun. Nagkamali ako, yoko na. That is the mindset of a loser. You're going to be buried under the mountain of your failure that rather than standing on top of it. So if you separate yourself from the failure and see failures as lessons, not mistakes. You see each and every one as lessons and you learn from them, apply them, don't repeat them. You're going to get better. It's inevitable for you to get better. With that, learning from all of your failures and separating yourself from the failure, rec recovering from setbacks is easier because people who personalize the failure, they cannot recover. They're traumatized by it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they don't want to try again because they believe they will repeat it and fail again. One of our core values is experimentation. And we um, we have a short excerpt there that I wrote that we try new things in the spirit of having a positive outcome. And we use that phrase often, actually, when we want to try something new. It's always in the spirit of having a positive outcome. It sounds funny, but there is a, an implicit mindset behind it is... That is be courageous. Have the courage to try new things. Mm -hmm. Because it is not in the spirit of failure. It is not with having a vision of failing, but rather it is with the vision of having a positive outcome. No one goes to a gold mine to dig dirt. We all want to get gold, but you have to go through the dirt to get the gold. Another thing that has enabled me to recover from setbacks when hiring these wrong people is grit. You have to have the tenacity and the resilience or in Tagalog, yung kunat. Makunat ka sa, in, in the face of um, in the face of rebellion, in the face of betrayal. And these are heavy words because these really happened to me. Betrayal. Um, I could say there was something traumatic about these things. It happened to me three times. I have changed in light of these things, some of them in a good way, some of them in a way that I didn't like so much, such as being ruthless in how I decide sometimes or in how I say things sometimes. I have to change that and I have improved in that area. But there, you have to have grit. People who give up in the face of adversity will never succeed. You have to have the strength and the will to win and keep moving forward. People who bounce back from failure, yun yung nakikita natin successful ngayon. Eh. People who are successful today, they mm. failed. I'm sure of it. There's not one person who's successful in our world, in the definition of our world at least, who never failed. They all failed. Most of them failed in a big way and they got up. Big names. Elon Musk lost his money, billions in in selling PayPal, almost went bankrupt, went back to sleeping on the couch. And he's he's a big name now, right? Everyone knows Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. But maybe you didn't know. I've read this book. It's what happened to him. Steve Jobs failed. He says in his Stanford, Stanford speech that it was bitter medicine, but the patient needed it. And that was when he got fired as the CEO of Apple Computers. But he ended really well, sold Pixar to Disney, made a lot of money there had been reinstated as the CEO of Apple, took the reign, made Apple the number one company in the world, these people failed. So know that you're going to fail. And if you don't have the grit and resilience to stand back up, especially in the face of adversity, 
you're gonna just stay in the mud. Sayang. You mentioned ruthlessness in your decision-making process in your speech, your words. Mm-hmm. This is something you're still struggling with. I would say yes. And the reason why I say that is because there is a part of me where I would say it's now instinctive. I don't like being ruthless, but it is the natural tendency for me to say things in that way. There are times when I hurt people's feelings. There are people who will argue, hindi kasi yung personality mo is dominant, high di ka. And dominant people are task-oriented. They don't care about people's feelings and are can say mean things. But I don't take it as an excuse. Eh, na yun mm. yung personality ko, kaya mm. ganito ako eh. I, ha- I know I have to improve on that. And so I try to first delay my initial reaction to every opinion I hear. My, my, my team may not notice it, but I delay. I keep quiet. I listen before I say anything. But I also tell the truth. It doesn't mean that you try to be less ruthless, that you will lie or try to sugarcoat your opinion. No, you have to be clear. You have to make sure that your message gets across. But there's a balance between being ruthless because you're clear, ruthlessly clear, and being mean. Being mean is personalizing the fault, the blame. Saying na, hindi, kasi ganito kay, kasi engot kay, bobo kay. These things, you're just being mean. You're not being ruthless. That's wrong. If you're being ruthlessly clear, you might shut down some of the things that they are saying, but that is because you're trying to protect the company or to protect them from making a mistake because you've been there. There are ways to say it better. There's always mm. a way to say it better. That's where I want to get to. Mm. Because I I know that I don't lie. I know that I'm not mean. But people say I'm ruthlessly clear. That may be a good or bad thing depending on who I'm talking with. There are people who like it. But there are people na yung kung tawagin nga natin balat sibuyas are hurt by it. And then they would not tell me they're hurt. Magiging gossip na. And it's not good. So I know I need to improve in that. I want to improve and optimize every part of my life, including in how I say things. What else do you uh, struggle with? It, maybe a habit, a mistake, a practice. Uh, could be personal, could be professional. Even as an organization, are there things that you notice that, hey, we're still doing this time and again. It's time to stop. I think one of the things we can improve as an organization would be the reporting systems. Mm-hmm. So everything, everyone is accountable, but it's not clear what really is happening on a big picture perspective. I always have to go there to, to talk to people on their seats about the granular details. And for me, it could be avoided if we have a big picture reporting system. So that's one thing we can improve on. Personally, what I want to improve on stems from a bad habit of sleeping late because I want to wake up early, like early morning, 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. A lot of people are already telling me their opinion that it's very hard, it's difficult, it's impossible, but that's something I want to improve. Eh? And in order for me to be able to rise to that goal, I have to fall back to the level of my systems, which is, what's my sleeping pattern? Do I try to wind down by 9 or 10 p.m.? Or am I still up and about during that time because if I am there's no way I can get up at 6am but if I'm already winding down doing my nightly routine uh, to to be able to sleep by 10 or 10.30 then it's easy for me to get up at 6 or 6.30 that's a lot easier at least so that one is something that I hope I'm able to achieve this year maybe by June hopefully I'm already able to adjust my entire lifestyle because when we're talking about sleeping habits, it's your entire lifestyle. It gets adjusted. Now you're not going to be able to work on creative things at night, which I'm used to doing because I'm a night owl. That's when I write my my excerpts in my books, my chapters. Now I have to write it early in the morning, which is better, but I'm not there yet. I, I don't wake up that early yet. So right now, I'm still forced to do it at night. How can I change that? There's two ways to go about it. Number one, you just will have, I just have to sacrifice sleep and lack sleep every day until my body adjusts to wake up that early in the morning. That's difficult, that's unhealthy, and that will make my decision making capabilities here in the office suffer. The other way to do it is to force myself to be able to wind down and sleep at a certain time, which is 9 30, 10, 10 30 p.m. 
wake up early, that is healthier, that is also better for my decision-making capabilities, but that is a lot harder to do. It's easier to just sleep when you want and force your body to adjust, but it's unhealthier. It, it has its consequences. So two ways to go about it. I'm trying to lean more towards the having a night, an early nightly routine. It is more difficult, but that's the way I want to do it. Mm. So those are some of the things that I still want to improve. I wouldn't go so far as, as to say that these are holes in our system that we need to fix. It's just things that we need to improve. 